Gotcha. Pardon me, Martin. Didn't mean to scare you. Just wanted some more cheesecake on the stiff. Okay, Jim. That's six shots you got. That ought to be enough coverage. What do you make of it? Looks like a bag. Martin, sometimes your powers of deduction amaze me. Thanks, Lieutenant. I'm glad you're beginning to appreciate me. Lieutenant Rico. Yeah? Lieutenant, here's a girl who knows something about it. Good. We need someone who can give us some help. This is Molly Carter. She found the body. Hi, Molly. Hi. Relax, Molly. He can't hurt you. You live around here? Yeah, I work at Cully's restaurant, live behind the joint. You know that guy? I'm not in the habit of striking up acquaintances with deceased gentlemen. Who lives in that shack? Some crazy old beachcomber. I've already been over there. He wasn't around. Molly, what were you doing on the beach at night alone? I wasn't alone. I was with Meg. Where's this Meg? Up at the house. Well, get her down here. I want to question her. Won't do no good. She won't talk. Oh, no. Bring her down here. I'll make her talk. If you do, you can put her in vaudeville. Make the dog. What's a dog doing on the beach at midnight? I'll ask the questions, Martin. You get busy around here and dig up some facts. See if anyone can identify the body, if he's ever been seen here before. Mm. Now, Molly, what can you tell me? Well, Meg and I were just walking along. I take Meg out for some fresh air every night. Ask anybody, they'll tell you. All right, Molly, I believe you. Just stick to the facts. Well, as we were walking, Meg suddenly stopped and looked. Then I stopped and looked. And what did we see? The man. He was dead. Dead? Oh! Oh, my! Oh! Martin! Martin! Not a clue. Not even a smell of a clue. What do you expect? Clues pointed out with neon lights? Yeah, well, I guess you're right. We're stymied until we identify the victim. I'll check the fingerprint detail again. Hi. Hello. Lieutenant Rico, the commissioner asked me to bring this Inspector James over to see you. What's the name? James. He's from England. Is that so? He's a long way from home, Scotland Yard. Lost? Not exactly. The commissioner wants you to show Inspector James around so he can catch on to some of our, uh, our uh... American investigational techniques. Yeah, that's what the commissioner said. Mr. James, I learned what I know the hard way. If you're really interested in learning American methods, I'll see that you're assigned a beat in Brooklyn. Boss, he's too classy for that. Obviously. The gentleman is accustomed to sitting behind Chippendale desks, smoking an Italian briar, and coaxing suspects into genteel confessions by serving them tea and crumpets. Unfortunately, we can't all have the kind of face that frightens criminals into confessions. Meaning? Meaning, Lieutenant Rico, that your features are positively revolting. Are you going to let him get away with that, boss? Why do you mean to get mad? Get out of this, Martin. Inspector, I dare you to step over that line. Very well. Now what? <laughs> Why, Tony, <laughs> you old, old buzzard. Son of a gun, when did you come over? <laughs> Last week. What are you doing? Well, uh, I'm sent on an investigation. And since I didn't get anywhere, naturally I thought of you. By the way, what about that bottle of bourbon you owe me? What bottle? The one you swiped from me in Naples. What about the dame you swiped from me in Paris? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the little gal we taught Cockney songs to? <laughs> well, what was that song? Poor but honest? Sing it, will you, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the same the old world oh, over. Yeah. It's the poor what gets the blame. It's the rich what gets the pleasure. Isn't that a blooming shine? A blooming shine. Hey, that's 
pretty. I know one. Uh... Uh, saved by the bell. Homicide. James. James who? Oh, that's his last name. That's me. Oh. That's James speaking. Say, boss, did you know him before? Martin, how would you ever guess? I don't know, it just came to me. You're remarkable. Not really. No. Oh, that's all right. I know Rico very well. Thank you. Goodbye. Who was that? British intelligence. How'd they know you were here? British intelligence. Oh. I could use some of that in this strangling case. I wish I could help you, Tony. Now that I think of it, maybe you can. Hmm. English banknotes, huh? Oh, my pal, hold on to me, huh? Money has broken up many a beautiful friendship, Martin. These were found on the body. Well, would a body mind if I took a look at a body? Not this one. <laughs> Tony, these peculiar lacerations on his thumb, what do you suppose caused them? Coroner call them severe pinches. They look like scratches to me, from barbed wire or something of the sort. They had nothing to do with the murder, according to the autopsy. Were his clothes torn? No. Get them out, will you, Martin? Sure. Where'd you find him? On the beach. He'd apparently been murdered there. There was nothing around that could have caused the injury. Hey, Lieutenant. I got a clue. His name's on his suit. Here it is. Tweed. Harris Tweed. Oh. Martin, sometimes I wonder how you got on the force. I've voted a straight Democratic ticket for 22 years. Let's get out of here. This is giving me the creeps. The morgue? No, you. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. What have we here? A beacon shining in the darkness. It's gone. Oh, no, it hasn't. Look. I owe Johnson an apology. A clue glowing like a neon light. Those spots were made by fluorescein dye. The glow comes from some form of phosphorescent crystals. Fluorescein dye. Didn't the government develop that during the war? Yes, it's a sea rescue aid. Standard equipment on all life routes. Sprinkled on the water, it produces a vivid yellow-green patch of color. It can easily be spotted by searching planes. Very interesting, but I see no connection with this case. A, the body was found on the beach, not in the water. B, there was no water in the lungs. C, he still had a crease in his pants. But D, his clothes were stained with fluorescein dye. But we definitely established the fact that he was not in the water. Which leads to one obvious conclusion that he was on the water. Of course, there is a missing link, the life rod. Or something similar. Would you mind if I wander over to the scene of the crime? Our killers play pretty rough, Jeff. <laughs> Don't worry. I absolve you of all responsibility. Did you hear that, Kirsch? Witnessed. OK. Now, where did you find the body? At Center Beach. Center Beach, where's that? No, oh, wait, I'll show you. You take the main highway south until you come to a restaurant called Cully's.
what you trying to do, rob me? I'm sorry, old boy. I thought you were a stiff. Uh, stiff? I guess I must have been stiff since I got out of the army. Well, when was that? It's... 1918? You look a little young for the First World War. Don't tell me they've had another. Oh, no. What the... Sister, what gives? 
I might ask you the same thing. This is my shack. What are you looking for? Take it easy, Whiskers. Are you kidding? I warn you, don't come near me. Put that knife away. I'll put it away where it'll hurt. Who's going to hurt who? Don't be rude, my dear. Answer the pretty gentleman. Oh. You better give that to me. Don't you know it's impolite to point? Oh. Oh, you would, huh? How would you like it if I beat you? Get away from there! Millions of lobsters! Leave my lobsters! Get out of here! All of you! You heard me! Get out of here! You better go, my dear. Frankly, I don't think he likes us. What are those dear little things doing in a restaurant? Housing shortage. Oh. Tully's restaurant. Reservation for four in half an hour? Well, just a moment, I'll check and see if we have room for your party. Uh, yes, we'll try to squeeze you in. Yes, we have raw oysters. You want them not too large, not too small. Not too cold. Uh-huh. <laughs> With or without pearls. <laughs> the name is Molly. Would you like one of our special sea dinners? Uh, just coffee for me, please. Black. Black coffee. I'd like a drink, please. What will you have? Oh, uh, whiskey and a splash of soda. Just a... Uh, Splash. Oh. It was kind of you to help me out of that spot. Oh, it isn't even worth mentioning, Miss... Uh... Uh, Green. Green. Well, now that you know my name, what's yours? Uh, Brown. Since we're both lying about our names, we might as well have a harmonious color. Brown and green. Charming combination, don't you think? Mm-hmm, provided they don't clash. You must be afraid of the water, Mr. Brown. What makes you say that? Oh, I, I see you're wearing your life preserver. Life? Oh, oh the Mae West. <laughs> That's just a little thing I picked up very cheaply. I know where you can get them for nothing. Interesting where? In the beachcomber shack. Oh, so that's what you were looking for. Not at all. You sure you're not lying again, Miss Brown? Oh, that's my name, isn't it? Your name's Green. Oh, you can forget about the Miss Green. That was just a little white lie. You see, I can't afford to have my real name dragged into this mess. Miss Green with the little white lies. You're quite colorful, aren't you? How are you involved in all this? Well, I may be the murderer. Then again, you may. In fact, generally, the killer is the very last person one would suspect. Well, even murderers have names. What is yours? Mr. James? Mr. James, I, I thought I... Your pardon, my name's Brown. Hey, what is this, another game? This morning down at Homicide, I took him in to see Lieutenant Rico. First, they didn't know each other. Then they started insulting each other. Then they started singing and dancing. And now, you don't know me. Know what's the matter with you? You've got magnesia. All right, Martin. I was just pulling your leg. I'm James. Well, what is it you wanted to tell me? Oh, just wanted to say hello. Oh. Hello, Martin. Now, may I say something? Sure, go ahead. Goodbye. Good. Oh, I can take it in. I got things to do myself. Goodbye. Why didn't you tell me you were connected with the police? Should I have told you? Well, it might have simplified matters. Maybe I can help you. Fine, help me. Well, you better prepare yourself. It's a long story. Uh, would you excuse me for a moment? Certainly. Oh, 
Molly, I wonder if you'll do me a favor. But, Nat! Would you go in the powder room and comb your hair? You got your nerve. <laughs> it isn't your hair. That's lovely. I want you to keep an eye on that girl in there. If she tries to get away, let me know at once. Okay. Uh, homicide detail, please. Copper, eh? Yeah. Hey, Bill, will you keep an eye on the cash register? <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Rico, please. Oh, he isn't? Would you expect him in soon? No. No, thanks. No, no message. Take care of it. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. <coughs> I throat <coughs> is burning. <coughs> but I could just rest here for a moment. Yes, yeah, sure. Can I have some water, please? Yes, yeah, yeah, sure, dearie. I'll be right back. you, officer. I've been robbed. You're lucky they didn't take your pants, bud. Oh, it's you. This is very embarrassing. Is this your wallet? Oh, yeah, thanks. Did you get anything? Oh, nothing of value, except the information that I'm a Scotland the Yard man. Your coat. My Mae West. It's gone. Your what's gone? A moment, I thought you said Mae West. Well, I did. That guy really conked you, didn't he? You got a match, bud? Oh, it's you again. It, what have you been doing for the past 30 minutes? The same thing I've been doing for the past 30 years. <laughs> See anyone prowling around here? <laughs> yes, you did. I was coming in from the east. I saw a big fellow sneaking off to the west. I followed him. And suddenly, the south. Uh, any questions? Okay. Case dismissed. I wonder. About what? That drunken friend of ours. No, no, he's harmless. He's in and out of jail all the time. Hey, Jeff, he said something about a big fellow. That could be the beachcomber. It was in his shack I found the mayor I was telling you about. Well, you really did find one, eh? Hey, Johnson, go over and pick up that beachcomber. We'll be in the cafe. Okay. I picked up something else in that shack, Tony. Yeah? A very beautiful woman. I don't know how you do it. You go into a broken down beachcomber shack and come out with a Mae West and a beautiful woman. If I went in there, I'd be lucky to come out with a beachcomber. <laughs> hey, he picked up something else, too. The wrestling die. Where is she, miss? I don't know. I figure she was with you. Oh. I went in to get some water. When I come out, she was gone. You're losing your touch. 
Used to be able to hold them longer than that. No, oh, look, Tony, this is bad. That woman was mixed up with this murder in some way, and so is that life preserver. Think so? Definitely. Here, I'll show you. Miriam, is this? This matchbox is a life preserver equipped with a container of fluorescein dye. There's pencils and airplanes. Oh, Molly. Yeah, I know. That's me. Would you turn the lights off, please? Oh, sure. Now, the plane is flying over the ocean. Someone in the plane drops the life preserver. Bounds away! The fluorescein dye seeps into the water and discolors the surrounding area, and the plane flies on its way. Now, this is another plane, a seaplane this time, on its way back to pick up the life preserver. Hmm, looks like the plane lands on the water, someone in the plane picks up the life preserver, and flies on back to land. That someone was probably the murdered man. Well, judging by the stains on his clothing, I'd say yes. Yes, but why would a man risk his neck for... Hey, wait a minute. Perhaps it wasn't the life preserver, but something fastened to it. Something very valuable. And in a canvas bag, too, I'll bet you. Nice theorizing, but, well, it could have been tossed from a ship. Yeah, that's true. Well, we can check. Yeah? Oh, there's lots of planes and ships. But this one came from England. Remember, you only found pound notes on him. He couldn't have been here long, or some of it would have been changed into American currency. That really narrows the search, Jeff. Well, let's get at it. Hey, that flutter, flutter, that flutter, that stuff. Can you see that stuff at night? That's a very intelligent question. Did that come from you? Yeah, that's right, Molly. You see, they added some phosphorus crystals to the fluorescein to give it greater nocturnal visibility. dark. Lieutenant Ashley, meet Inspector James of Scotland Yard. Well, how do you do, sir? How do you do? He'd like to ask you some questions. I understand that uh, last Saturday you reported the fluorescein patch offshore from Center Beach. That's correct, sir. I thought it was kind of strange and so close. Uh, do you recall the exact time? Yes, it was about 1700. That's 5 p.m. civilian time. Did you notice anything else? Any boats nearby? Possibly a seaplane? No. Nothing floating in the area? A uh, life preserver, for instance? No, sir. As a matter of fact, I went down and taxied through the patch. Oh, you did, huh? Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> thanks very much. Well, you're welcome, sir. That's all, Ashley. Well, it didn't help much, did it? Frankly, no, sir. I wish I could determine whether that came from a plane or a ship. Oh, it couldn't have been a ship. Huh? Transatlantic vessels can't navigate in these waters. There are too many shoals. Then it must have been a plane. Well, it's quite possible. This area is under the direct route of several transatlantic airlines. Oh. Transatlantic airlines, huh? Yes, we had three flights over that area Saturday afternoon. Tell me, Mr. Elwood, could an object, say, about the size of a life preserver be thrown out of one of your planes by a passenger? Uh, that is, while in flight. Definitely not. There are no trap doors, except in the pilot section. The passengers aren't allowed in there. And the windows? Can't be opened. Strange that you should speak of windows. I have a report here on flight 19 to the effect that one of the windows in the washroom had to be replaced. Evidently, it was broken while the ship was in flight. Flight 19. Now, where would that originate? In England. Could I have a copy of that flight log? Take it. We have others. And who would the air hostess be? Anne Hogan. Anne Hogan. Mr. Elwood called and told me to expect you. I'll be very glad to help you in any way I can. Thank you. Tell me about your last trip across. Anything unusual? No, it was quite uneventful. How about the passengers? The usual run. No one annoyed me, some ignored me, but the majority were quite normal. Are you good at remembering faces? I only remember the interesting ones. I remember yours, for example. And what am I supposed to deduce from that last remark? You're from Scotland Yard. Make your own deductions. I warn you, I'm an optimist. I deduce that you and I will get along splendidly. So, go get your hat and coat. 
Oh, you're taking me out. Well, aren't I? Well, come along. Where shall we go? The Sky Room? No, I had somewhere a little more bizarre in mind. The Persian Room? No, the Morgue. You sure he's the guy? Positive. Between checking him in and out and serving his meals, I must have talked to him at least a dozen times. Thank you. That's definitely the body of Mr. Rodine. That's right. Here it is in the flight log. Mr. Rodine, seat nine. Do you know anything about him? He was a diplomatic courier. He was? Yes. How do you know? Well, the British customs officials passed him through without inspecting his baggage. Well, there it is in a nutshell, Tony. The perfect setup. A courier with diplomatic immunity could pass through the customs with anything. Even the blueprints for the atomic bomb. Or a sack full of jewels, for instance. Jewels? Why do you say that? Stop clowning, Jeff. Even Martin knows why you're here. I do. Well, I don't. I wish someone would let me in on it. Oh, I remember. Those London jewel robberies. I read about them. So that's what brings you here. Yes. It used to be a secret. Is that so? Lady Pomeroy was on a flight with us a week after she was robbed. She said they stole every jewel she had, 20,000 pounds worth. Is that true? Uh huh. That was one of their minor operations. I'll say it was. I heard them Duke and Duchesses were hocking their jewels right and left just to keep them safe. Martin, go get a cup of coffee, will you? I ain't thirsty. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, okay. You're the boss. I wonder how Martin would be on the information desk. <laughs> There's one thing bothers me. That courier could have walked through American customs without inspection. Instead, he ties the jewels onto a life preserver and throws them out of the plane. Why? Echo answers why. Why don't you get down to his consulate and collect the answer? a courier to report to you on Saturday, sir? Yes. I'm afraid he'll never get here. He's dead. Indeed. How do you know? Miss Hogan just identified his body at the morgue. This is impossible. But I, I couldn't be mistaken. As a diplomat, I find it very difficult to contradict the lady. But our courier was found murdered in London. Murdered? In London? I just received word. But what about the courier on my plane? He was obviously an imposter. A phony. Evidently, he killed the real courier so he could use his credentials. How horrible. Imagine murdering a man for that. Was the phony courier Rodine alone? He seemed to be. Did he talk to any of the other passengers? No. But just before we landed, I heard him arguing with someone in the washroom. Uh-huh. Who? I don't know. I recognized his voice, but not the other man's. Could you hear what they were arguing about? An air hostess, Mr. James, is a student of human nature, not an eavesdropper. An air hostess, Miss Hogan, is also a woman. Come on, give. Come on, give. I can't. Honestly, I tried to hear, but I couldn't. What's the matter with those custom inspectors? Can't they tell a diplomat from a thief? It's growing more difficult every day. Yeah. Provocative, isn't it? This brings us right back where we started. Not exactly. There's a seaplane involved, which shouldn't be too hard to find. Shall we start looking? Let's. Well, how do you like playing detective? Very monotonous. But I like the way you're confiding in me. Routine Scotland Yard practice, drawing out the suspect. After all, young lady, you were in that plane, you know. 
And I may as well tell you now that I'm not going to let you out of my sight until I finish this case. You mean I'm going to be stuck with you for the next 20 years? Judging by the time we've spent vainly searching for that seaplane, you may be stuck even longer, darling. Good. Huh? Since you've called me darling, my feelings have changed. Now I don't mind about the 20 years. Well, during all that time, what are you going to be doing? Helping you. You need it. Honestly, you do. You're so obvious. Huh? Now, let's see. Who's next on our list? What a cheek. <laughs> Amos Wright, 942 Waterfront Avenue. Mr. Wright? Might be. What's on your mind? We'd like to ask you a few questions. Look, -a, folks. This ain't no information bureau. This is a plane chartering service. Now, uh, do you want to stand here and gossip, or do you want to rent a plane? <laughs> no, thanks very much. We just wanted a little information. Pretty busy. Can't make no money giving out information. No, I suppose not. My poor Robert. He's gone, and I may never see him again. Robert? Well, who, who's Robert? My husband. Yes, her husband. Uh, he's been missing since last Saturday. We thought perhaps you might have seen him. He's a little fellow wearing a brown suit with a moustache. Brown suit and a moustache. Seen him all right. Tried to charter a seaplane. Tried? Yep. Wouldn't take him up. Why not? Tried to pay me in fern money. English currency? Well, no. I wouldn't rightly know. Never got to examine it. Don't know nothing about fern money. Might have been counterfeit. What did he say when you refused to take him up? Seemed kind of put out. Offered to pay me double. But the way I figure, twice as much counterfeit ain't worth no more than half as much. Well, it's again my principles to take counterfeit money, even if it is twice as much. So I... Send him to another outfit. Which one? I ain't mentioning no name. The competitor. Oh, please, please. He might have gone there. It's given my principles to mention competitors. I might make an exception for a lady. It was Joe King. He's got a place down the beach a ways. Joe King. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Wright. You've been so kind. Don't mention it. Goodbye, Mr. Wright. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, uh, poor woman. She don't know how lucky she is to be rid of him. Really? Yeah, he's just plain no good. Got no principles. But he's got a girlfriend. How do you know? She was here just a while ago, asking about him. Appeared mighty anxious to find out if I took him up. Hmm. Yep, awful pretty. Like their fuselage. Streamlined. Blonde. Wearing a silver fox coat. How did you know? Did you tell her about Joe King? Can't remember. But if she asked me, I sure must have told her. I'll bet you did. Well, thank you. like we have company. What are you going to do about that? Get rid of them, Joe. Be careful what you say. Good afternoon. 
Hello. Uh, Mr. King? Sorry, if you're looking for a plane, they're all busy. No, I'm not interested in a charter. I'm trying to locate a friend of mine called Rodine. Rather a small chap, about uh, five foot six in height. What about him? Well, didn't he charter a plane from you? No. Well, that's strange. He told me he was coming down here to see you. Must have changed his mind. Anyhow, so many people come in here, I can't keep track of them all. Oh, I suppose not. Well, you seem to be pretty busy. Would you rather we came back later? Don't come back at all. I tell you, I don't know anything about your friend. He wasn't in here. Besides, I was out all day Saturday. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. King. Goodbye, and uh, thank you for being so helpful. You weren't very convincing, Joe. Elementary, my dear Jeffrey. What was it? His guilty conscience gave him away. He said he was not here all day Saturday. So? So, no one asked him what he did on Saturday. That's right. Yes, I'm sure he took our man up. Well, how are you going to prove it? By his log. That's a great idea. As a pilot, he has to keep a record of all of his flights. Let's go right back in there and get it. Well, darling, you don't just walk in and accuse a man of lying. Well, why not? He is a liar. Ever heard of a search warrant? Oh, well, couldn't your friend Tony give you one? Now, wait a minute. I don't want to tip King off. Well, then what are you going to do? I'm going back in there and get it. Well, that's just what I said to do. Yes, dear, but it isn't dark yet. Oh. Hey there. Looking for something, Miss Green? You make a habit of sneaking up on people. Do you make a habit of sneaking away from people? The last time I saw you, you were going to tell me a nice long story. Very rude of you not to have finished it. Uh, pardon me. Uh, am I interrupting something interesting, I hope? <laughs> Miss Hogan, I'd like you to meet a short acquaintance of mine, Miss Green. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Trilling? Nice seeing you again. Mrs. Trilling? Do you two know each other? Miss Green was Mrs. Trilling when she was a passenger on my last flight from England. As I recall it, she sat directly back of the courier, Mr. Rodine. Your memory's good. Too good. Can get you into a lot of trouble. Oh, Mrs. Trilling, I highly disapprove of women carrying revolvers. Very unladylike. Here, you better let me have Stay it. Stay back there, or I will let you have it. Clip your hands. Turn around and face the plane. Both of you. Do something clever. We're doing the cleverest thing we can right now. Embarrassing, isn't it? Very, for a Scotland Yard man. Show me the keys to your car. be a good little girl, or do I have to carry you? <laughs> Shall we go? Joe, I'm going to have to leave you for a little while. So, uh... All right, what's the angle? Why did you bring me here instead of taking me down to homicide? Because homicide is interested in murder. I'm interested in jewels. What jewels? The ones the phony courier threw out of the plane. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, Mrs. Trilling, I feel quite sure that when you went into the beachcomber shack, you weren't looking for lobsters. I feel equally sure that when you were searching the plane, you weren't looking for a monkey wrench. What I can't figure is, did she cross the courier? Did the courier double-cross her, or did the two of them triple-cross someone else? 
Have you any more bright ideas? Come to think of it, yes. Jeff, let me see the flight log. Here it is, Mr. Farrington. If I remember correctly, the two of you were rather chummy during the flight. Well, it's customary to strike up an acquaintance with a fellow passenger, isn't it? Was there anyone on this plane whom you knew before you left England? No. We're wasting time. Anne, would you mind telephoning Rico and telling him to come right down? I believe we have an accessory to the murder. Right. Look. What kind of a girl do you think you're out with anyway? Don't worry, honey. I'll take care of this much. He insulted this me. This isn't going to do you any good. Why, you... working together. No, I don't think so. He was pretty rough with us. Oh, we'll call Tony and give him a description. He'll put out a dragnet for both of them. Then what? Well, the party's getting rough, darling. I'm going to send you home in a cab. And where are you going? Well, I have to get that flight log from Joe King's, remember? Then I'm going with you. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. You definitely are not, and that's final. Rico. Burglary detail wants to get in touch with you right away. Missed you on the last call. Where are you now? Center Beach, heading for Joe King's. Roger. And I found it. And you stay here. Alone? Not on your flight. Airport. Let's go. It's Joe King. What's happened? I. I. Let's get him in the office. There should be a first aid kit around here somewhere. Oh. Well, Tony on the spot. Hurt bad? Not too bad. He's lucky. Who plugged it? I don't know. He'll be all right. Well, here's what we want. Yeah, Saturday the 10th. According to this, he was all day on one job. Doing what? Delivered vaccine to Good Angels Hospital, Block Island. Seaplane chartered by D.A. Doyle. Then he couldn't have taken the murdered man up. Maybe he didn't go there. 
Operator, get me uh, Good Angels Hospital, Block Island, please. Yes, the vaccine was delivered for one of our patients. Yes. The plane was chartered by a Mr. D.A. Doyle. You sure of that? Oh, I see. Here, Tony, just a moment. After what day? What day was that, nurse? Oh, I'll see. The vaccine was delivered Friday the 9th. Friday the 9th? Thank you very much. So it was Friday he was there, not Saturday. This guy King is the murderer. Of course. He took Gannon up in his plane. Who? The victim was Louis Gannett, a European confidence man. Report just came through. Well, why didn't somebody tell me these things? When are you ever around so anyone can tell you anything? You blame me? It's as simple as a nose on my face. That's far from simple. I can see it now. They hop in the plane. They fly out to the die. They swoop down on the water. Splash. They pick up the life preserver bag. They open it. Jules, they're blinded. King says to Gannett, cut me in. Gannett says, no. King says, cut me in or else. Gannett says, or else what? So, King killed him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Well, it's a very excellent deduction with one glaring error. King would have left the body far out to sea instead of leaving it on the beach as Exhibit A. Oh, I hate to admit it, but you've got a point there. What I'd like to know is who shot Joe King? Big guy. What big guy? I don't know his name. But Saturday, me and a passenger got back from a trip. When you picked up the life preserver, you mean? Yeah. When we got ashore, we started up to the office. This big guy was standing across the street watching. And my passenger took off without paying me. So I followed him. And I saw this big guy chase him around the hangar in the dock. I lost him. Then what? Went looking for him. We found him on the beach. They were arguing. Suddenly, the big guy grabbed him by the throat. I got there too late. He was a goner. And the big guy pulled a gun on me. First, he accused me of taking some jewels. And he gun whipped me. Well, why didn't you call the police? Call the police. I didn't have a chance. He never let me out of his sight. Bound and gagged me every time he went out. Well, why did he shoot you just now? Try to make a break. Get away. Martin, get him down to the emergency hospital. It's easy taken care of. He'll be all right in a few days, Joe. Coming, Jeff? Go on. This ring was picked up in a pawn shop. A guy answering the description of the beach coma hawked it. Look familiar? It certainly does. This is part of the Pomeroy collection. You pick up the beachcomber? Not yet, but we're still looking. That's rather a porous dragnet you cast out, old boy. First the killer slips through, and then Mrs. Trilling and the beachcomber do likewise. Couldn't be too porous. The ring didn't slip through. By the way, where is that ring? I gave it to you. I gave it to you. <laughs> Come on, you light-fingered wench. Hand it over. That's a ten-carat diamond. Well, I'll trade you even for a ten-course dinner. It's a deal. <laughs> I'm going to give you so much to eat that I'm going to have to carry you out of here. Oh! Oh! Oh, Mabel, Bill, oh, somebody oh. help me get that off. Oh! 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 Yikes! How can something be so mean and taste so good? Well, you'd do the same thing if you were a lobster, Molly. Pardon me, Jeffrey. I'm going to try and pretty up. Nature beat you to it, darling. Oh, thanks. I've been waiting for you to show up. I've got news for you. Oh, really? I'll take that. Oh, thank you. Well, what is the news? I just had Meg out for a walk. Oh, that is good news. You're still looking for that blonde. They gave you the slip, aren't you? Yes, have you seen her? Half an hour ago. Where? She was with a man, and they went into all Mrs. Blanchard's. Mrs. Blanchard? Yes, isn't that strange? Well, what's so strange about that? But Mrs. Blanchard doesn't live there anymore. The house is closed. Well, Molly, where is this place? You can't miss it. It's the first house this side of Joe King's. Gosh, I'm wounded. That darn lobster. A lobster, of course. Why didn't I think of that before? Think of the lobster? Molly, tell Miss Hogan to get on with dinner. I'll be back in a little while. Well, where are you going? I'm going to see some lobsters, a tub full of them. Get rough with 
three, mister. It isn't healthy. You just came in time to save me a lot of trouble. Where are they? Where are who? You know what I'm talking about? Turn around. So you pawned a ring, huh? You better come along with me. I got some questions I want to ask you privately. Come on, get out. You shouldn't have let her go. Fine time to tell me. He was hardly out of my sight from the moment he stepped out of that seaplane till I grabbed him. Too bad you grabbed him so hard. Yes, I know, I know. It was my fault. I was sure he had them on him. You searched the beach thoroughly. Every inch of it. I know he picked up the jewels. I learned that much from Joe King. But I can't figure out where he hid them. You'll find them. Well, I'll have to work pretty fast. There's a Scotland Yard man right on my heels. Didn't take him long to find that life preserver. It didn't take me long to take it away from him, either. I know. I was there at the time. Sorry, Irene. I thought you were working with him. Me? With a Scotland Yard man? Oh, it's a tough break. After all our work and your plan so perfect. To have the courier bring them right through the customs. I guess the temptation was too much for him. Those jewels burned a hole in his diplomatic pouch. There's only one thing I can't quite figure out, Irene. Why did you and he disappear so quickly after you went through the American customs? Well, I was afraid I'd lose track of him if I stopped to tell you, so I followed him. I was only trying to protect our interests. After all, we'd been through all that before. Why did you follow him? Because you didn't trust him? I, I don't know. Something told me he was about to double-cross us. Woman's intuition, I guess. Where was your woman's intuition when you brought him to me in London and vouched for him? <laughs> How could I doubt his honesty? After all, he was a member of the diplomatic corps. The real diplomatic courier was murdered in London by you and your accomplice because you both decided to double-cross me. You rigged up that life preserver before you left London. No. No, Frank, you've got me wrong. You're lying. What's the matter, Irene? Are you nervous? I, I did the wrong thing, Frank. I, I made a mistake. The first mistake I've made in all the jobs we've pulled together. Think of what we've meant to each other. You need me. I can still help you find the jewels. You don't have to give me my share. Anything you say is all right, anything. You'll forgive me, won't you, Frank? The jewels, where are they? Oh. Oh. The beachcomber has them. I know he has. Where? In his shack. I believe you, Irene. I think you're on the level with me. Of course I am. There's only one thing that makes me sure. This ticket. He pawned one of the jewels. See? You see? Now you take this. I'm going back to his shack 
and give it another look over. Oh, no, you don't, Frank. Now I've got you. Put down that gun. Stay where you are. I don't get it, Irene. I wouldn't double-cross you. You're so right. Of course I'm right. You'll get what's coming to you. Yes, and that's everything. Why should I split with you when all I have to do is this? No, Irene. No, don't, don't. What's the matter, Frank? Are you nervous? Don't be a fool, Irene. You can't handle this alone. Is that all you have to say? Sweet dreams, Frank. I forgot to tell you the gun wasn't loaded. See, Irene, I never really trusted you. I told you I found one of the jewels on the beach. Just one. You're lying. Are you going to tell me the truth, or do I have to... If I do, will you let me go? Yes. They're in the tub of lobster just outside my shack. That the truth? This is the truth. Somebody threw them there, and I found them and covered them with seaweed. Well, I'll find out. Just to be sure that you're here when I come back... to get away from here far and fast. We'll catch up with you. That is, if there's nobody left here to talk. And you won't be here. Tell me something. You had a chance to kill me the other night. Why didn't you do it then? Well, I figured a smart individual like you might lead me to the jewels. It's proved that I was right. Yeah. I was never so glad to see anybody in all my life. You're quite a shot, old boy. I didn't fire it. Huh? I didn't. Me neither. I don't think. Then to whom do I owe my life? What's going on? Come here, Jeff. Meet your life preserver, Sergeant Blake, Inspector James. And Miss Hogan. Well, I'm glad to meet you officially, Inspector. I've admired you from close range for some time. Well, thank you very much, Sergeant. You're a pretty handy man to have around. Oh, I assigned the sergeant as your bodyguard. Couldn't have you running around unprotected. Uh, that's what I've been telling him. But that drunk routine was very authentic. Just an act. Really? Sure. Never touch this stuff. I'm a teetotaler. Amazing fellow. There's only one way I can thank you. You know, they ought to pass laws against a woman like you. Why? Madam, your kisses are intoxicating. <laughs> <laughs> are they really? Let me see. 